So I asked myself, why do I get so excited, you know, doing programming and coding and stuff like that? And there's several reasons, you know, one is you're solving a big problem that have a high perceived value so you can get paid pretty good and the jobs are relatively in and out you know you're not doing any heavy lifting you're doing mostly mental type of stuff so i'm starting to see that key coding is like that you're doing a lot of in and out type of jobs and um it's very lucrative it's very lucrative so what i want to do is inspire you if you've never done this before i'm going to break it down and show you how you can do an all keys loss scenario on a 2017 Toyota Camry with the IM508 in a new little device called the APB112. We're gonna go deep into this today, all right? Now, for those of you who don't know, my name is Curtis Harden. I'm an independent Autel diagnostic consultant. So in a nutshell, what I do is I'll get a mechanic, right? And I'll go in there and rip out all the coding and programming out of them that he didn't even know he had, all right? And that's what I'm trying to inspire you to do today. Now I tell people, if you have a finger and you can read, you can code, okay? It's really that simple, okay? So, first thing you're gonna learn is how to use the APB112 and how it can save you time and money. Second, which Autel equipment are compatible with the APB112? Third, which serial programmers are not compatible with the APB112? There's two models, there's the XP400 and the XP200, okay? And then lastly, how to do an all keys lost on a 2017 Toyota Camry, all right? Now, before we do this, we're gonna need some things. And first is the IM508, the APB112 smart key simulator, your smart key, and then lastly, a battery maintainer, okay? Now, here's this little guy right here. Now on the top, this is your status indicator, and there's three status indicators. First is your blue, then your green, then your red, okay? Now, the blue represents that there's power and everything is working fine. This is its default state, okay? Next is your green. Your green represents that there's data communication, okay? Everything's going fine, there's data interaction. And lastly, when the light starts flashing red, it represents the status of a firmware upgrade, okay? Now, if you look at the bottom here, this is the USB uh, port that provides data communication. Now, the way it works is there's a USB cable that connects right under here on top of the IM508 USB port, okay? Now, the way it works is, um, but before I jump into the way it works, the benefits of this is it's a smart key simulator designed to collect data sent from the ignition coil. And its, it's goal is to identify the ignition coil troubles and decode the data of the vehicle key chip, okay? Now, it can also simulate the key vehicle key chip as well. Right now, it supports 4D type chips and more chips are on the way. So that's the benefits of the APB112. Now, it only can be applied to the following models. The IM508 and the IM608. Now, for those of you who don't know, the IM508 comes standard with the XP200, okay? Now, there might be scenarios where the Autel software, if you own the IM508, in order to execute a procedure, it's gonna ask that you have the XP400, okay? And I'm gonna dive into this a little bit more because you guys are kind of confused, like, well, you know, what's the difference? And I'll, I'll share with you in a minute, okay? Um, now, you're probably saying, Kurt, why is this little thing so important? You know, you got this technical babble, like, why do I need this thing? Well, the answer is simple, okay? So, with Toyota, there's two types of keys. There's your master key, all right? And then there's your valet key. Now, only a master key can be used to prepare a new key. So if you're working on a Toyota, and let's say the client has a, um, a spare key, um, you won't be able to do the procedure. You need a master key, 
So with the APB112, you can use it to fool the car's computer to think that that's the master key. Then you can add on the, the, the secondary key, okay? Another example would be, let's say you buy and sell cars, all right? You bought a car that was like, you know, the person didn't pay their, their bills and the, the tow company took it and there's no keys on it. So what you can do is you can get the APB112 and fool the vehicle to think that's the master key. So you can just, you know, use that to start the car and you're on your way. No towing, no locksmith. I mean, you're good to go. So I hope you can start to see how this can save you a lot of time. All right. Now, let's talk about the serial programmers, the XP200. As I said before, this comes with the IM508. All right. Now, in terms of the coverage, the IM508 is a level 4 out of 5. 5 being the best, 1 being the worst. It's a 4 out of 5. Because in order to do certain like key coding procedures like on the European vehicles, you're going to need the XP400. All right. So for example, if you look at uh, number 3, the Mercedes infrared key slot, that's not on here on the XP200. And as I said before, if we bring it back to the APB112, there might be times where the uh, IM508 software will ask you to connect that to the XP400. So that's when you would need it, okay? So you can purchase this extra. This is like $600, okay? Now, let's get to the meat and potatoes, which you guys all been waiting for. I'm going to show you how to do this all keys loss scenario, all right? So first, we're going to take out the IM508. I'm going to click emo and then we're going to identify the vehicle. All right, so I'm going to click Toyota, manual selection. Uh, you can click, you know, and we're going to click other for this, just this demonstration. Let's scroll over, click Camry, smart key, and then keyless. Now, what we're going to do is back up the immobilizer data. All right, so this function is used to back up the EEPROM data and it can be used to generate a simulator key for emergency start to perform the key matching function, okay? So right now it's, it's pulling all this data and what you'll see on the, the bottom left here or where it says number five, that's what I call the function route, okay? Very important. You, you can write this down and then you'll be able to take this, go on the field and execute it. The function route will save your life, okay? Knowing exactly what to do. So now we're gonna save this file, all right? And I'm just gonna put anything. Okay. All right, and then when you're done, you just go on the top here and you're gonna press okay. Okay, awesome, back succeeded. Okay, now we're gonna generate the simulator key right in the middle here. Select the EEPROM data. Now we're just gonna, the file we just made, we're gonna go select it again. Okay, there it is right there. We're gonna load it up, press okay. All right, and use the, the key type soon. SLK3, okay. All right, now connect the APB112. So we're gonna put it on the IM508 and press okay. And it's obtaining, it's, it's getting all that information. It's burning it to it. And you're gonna see it's gonna start pulsing red. That means that the firmware is being upgraded onto the APB112. All right, pretty cool. All right, so burning firmware, please rate. And once this is done, guys, you can literally use it to, to turn on the car. All right, like if you wanted to, you could just be on your way after this. All right, so it's been done successfully. Press OK, and then you know, we're gonna go ahead and test it. So put the similar key to the start stop button and press start stop to turn on the vehicle engine. All right, and it will, it will turn on, okay? So we're gonna add on another key and we want to use the APB112, so we're going to click yes. 
All right, and we have to do this in a little short time frame. Okay, press OK. All right, now put the APB close to the start button, and then you're gonna hear beep, a beep sound. All right. All right, now we're gonna get the remote, and you're gonna hear two beep, two beep. All right, it's registering. And you know what I tell people, as long as you know the function route, there'll be no doubts. Okay, that's the most important thing. So that's pretty much it, guys. You're gonna test start the smart key remote. You know, press the start stop button. You're done. You know, that took probably less than five minutes. Okay, so look, there's a lot of tools coming out and I know you guys might be a little bit confused. If you want me to help you develop a, a package for you and give you this training, go to my website www.autotech.ca.ga okay anyhow if you like this video comment like subscribe thanks so much for your support keep well and i'll see you guys next week take care bye